evening, everyone. Um, looks like we got 26 of us in here. Um, I want to wait a, a little longer before we start doing anything official. Um, <clears throat> your test, I am going to get to those starting tonight. So I've uh, just had kind of a busy day yesterday, night, last night. And um, let's see, I have no new news from, uh, from school. And I'm not sure, you know, what's going to go on with sports, but uh, we'll see. Okay, so integrals. Do you guys have any specific integrals you'd like to see done? Hey, what's up, Bobby? Hey, what's up, Bobby? Hey, can you guys hear me? Yeah. Yep. Yeah, okay. So, this was the remnants of Math 30 this morning. I'm just running out of things to talk about with that stuff. I just, just really rough. Okay, getting text mode here. Put it up there. 185. Error. Calc with parametric. Now this way I save all these things so that if your YouTube thing doesn't work, I can just always go back to this. All right, so let me uh, flip this thing around. And got it in my pencil mode. Okay, this morning I was having some connection problems. So um, and it seems like it seems like it's because everyone's here using the Wi-Fi. So but hopefully we'll get okay. So we had parametric equations. So we had a curve C given by some function of X and Y set equal to zero. Okay, now this is this is how you would write like your curve um, compactly. Okay, next semester we will be looking at you know, or you guys will be in Math 280, looking at you know z being a function of x and y, and what we'll end up getting are surfaces in three-dimensional space. Okay, so for example here, my function of x and y, it might be x squared plus y squared minus four, let's say. And so this is the circle of radius four when I set it equal to zero. We have our parametric equations that x is x of t and y it is also a function of t, and it's the same parameter, t goes between, let's say, some a and b, okay? So for our curve, sitting out in space somewhere with an x, y grid, the curve might be doing something like that, and, you know, terribly not a function, but it looks nice and smooth everywhere. And so if we want to find slopes of tangent lines, what we found yesterday was that the slope of the tangent line dy dx ended up being 
y dot over x dot. Or you could write it as y prime of t over x prime of t. Okay. I like to use the dots. Probably that's the physics major in me. Okay. And then we learned that the second derivative, d squared y, dx squared, and this is something that we use to measure concavity, figure out where inflection points are, and other things, acceleration, you know, if we're talking about motion. So what it ended up being is the derivative with respect to t of the thing that we just computed, dy dx, let me erase that. dy dx divided by dx dt. So kind of a clumsy formula, but nevertheless. Okay, and then we did talk about area as well. And I said, now we really don't use this very much. It's only when it makes sense. So if the area is like from A to B, where that means X is going to A to X is going to B. What we did is it shifted to some other bounds, alpha and beta, Y of T, and then it was DX DT DT. Okay, now when you're doing line integrals next semester in math 280, and I'll tell you what those are in a minute. Um, this is how you're going to be, you know, doing your skies with parameters and stuff. Okay, so we got the arc length, and that's where you kind of stop. Uh, Professor, yep. can you go up a little bit? Uh, I got kicked out up here a few seconds. How far back? Uh, just right there. Well, that's kind of where it was. Okay. Thanks, Professor. Yeah. All right. So now let's talk about arc length. Okay. So if I've got a curve C, and let, let's say that the curve is given by y equals f of x, what we discovered, I think at the beginning of the week or the end of last week or whatever, was that the length of the curve, let's say that x is going to go between a and b, um, a and b, that the length of the curve ended up being the integral from A to B of the square root of one plus the derivative squared dx. Okay. Now, if we do a little sleight of hand here, and I go, okay, it's the integral from A to B of the square root of one plus, wait a minute, let me erase those bounds. Let me, here, let me, Okay, so. I walk away for one second. That's A less than or equal to XB. Yeah, less than or, oh shit. Here, start, start this whole section over. I'm having, I don't know what's going on with this pencil. Okay, so A less than or equal to X less than or equal to B. Okay, now suppose 
that we can parameterize this curve, okay? Where X is gonna be given as a function of T and Y is gonna be given as a function of T. And the T is gonna run between the bounds alpha and beta. And maybe he's picking this because these kinds of substitutions lead to more of the um, trig substitution type integrals, even though it's not necessarily the case. So if I stick all my parameters in, the, the length is now gonna be the integral from alpha to beta, and now it's this square root, one plus dy dt over dx dt quantity squared, then the dx is dx dt dt. Okay, now. Hey, man. Need to think about that for a second. Not only do I have to change things inside the radical, but the dx has to turn into dx dt times dt. Okay, so if we think of these things as, you know, uh, their own guys, we're gonna go equal to the integral alpha to beta. Okay, now it's, I'm gonna common denominator this up dx I think we lost him again. Yeah. I thought it was me. I got I thought I got kicked out again. I was like, damn it. Yeah. Is, is uh, the next exam on chapter 10? I think so. I think he says just 10.1 and 10.2. Maybe it's, could also be on, did we do eight? Sorry. Uh, I, no, we skipped I, eight. I, I, so. okay. I know we're coming back to nine, I think was the thing he said. So. Okay, so it looks like Dylan's saying it's 8.1, 8.2, and maybe 10.1, 10.2, but we're not 100%. Okay, thank you. you know, it's it's going to be on Tuesday, just so you know. Oh, he said that? Uh, pretty much. I mean, he hasn't confirmed yet, but I asked him what it would oh be. Oh, my God, that's so soon. Oh, we're, we need we have to have a test every week from here oh, to I know. the class because it's an eight-week class and six tests. Oh, God. Okay, thank you. Thank you for letting me. I had no idea it was on Tuesday again. Yeah, no, I think we'll have a test probably every Tuesday. Um, maybe one we'll skip a week and then we'll do the final, same as last. He did that last semester, like oh, okay. tests back to back to back and then the final, same. Oh, okay. Actually, what I heard him saying is that the next te test will be 8.1 and 8.2 and some. Sorry, you cut out. Are you saying it's not 10? No, no, I know. Yeah, he said he said it will be eight point one and eight point two and some integrals. Oh, some integrals. Okay, so no ten then. Okay. No, uh, he's he said that it was gonna be eight point one, eight point two, but because and some integrals. Few sections, he was gonna add integrals to fill the rest of the yeah. test up to make okay. like ten yeah. questions. So this stuff's not even gonna be on the test. Yeah, he did this a lot last calculus class I had. So we did like tons of stuff and then we'd be tested on something a week previous or so. So we should perhaps clarify everything but when he can't gets back. Yeah. No, yeah. Well, one of us will ask him, I'm sure. But he'll we'll talk about it again on Monday too. Um, 
going to be probably the same. I think he said he's going to give us more time than the last uh, test. So he might give us like multiple days like he used to. Oh, really? That's nice. Yeah, I he did for sure. But he said like, hey, I'm probably going to make it a longer period of time. So he last time. Probably, we did probably harder. <laughs> oh, no, no, no. They're on record that so he at least tried the time thing. Yeah. Oh, uh, it looks like he got back, but he still isn't. Yay. Yay. Yes, I'm excited because this is like stuff that's really interesting. Oh, I hate uh, this is like geometry and trigonometry, and I don't like theoretical math. So well, I haven't seen any numbers so far outside of one. Oh, <laughs> he's out again. Yeah, he's left again. Mm. He'll probably come back. Uh, if not, you know, by 6.30 or so, we'll just announce. Hi, you're the host now. I like that. <laughs> How oh, good. <laughs> I'm curious how we all did on that test. I uh, I know I missed five. I got I put divergent, not zero. So oh, there I is. added zero and then divergent because I wasn't so sure because the graphing looked like it was a divergent graph. Yeah. All right. That was my first kick out of the day. I uh, mean, of the class today. If so you for kick one for out one. later in the class, do you want us to just stick around, or how how do you want us to deal with kickouts for the most part? Oh. Well, what'll happen is if I can't get back in, I'll get into Canvas, and I'll and I'll put it in an announcement. Okay. It I almost didn't. It kept giving me an error message that, and so then I uh, I re I logged out and logged in. But uh, anyway, you yeah. froze pretty early in that problem, so I don't know how far you got. But okay, so let's see where we are. So we'll go here, and maybe there's a solar. What's it called? Flare today. Uh, solar flare. You. We didn't do that line right above. Can you scroll up a little bit more? I want to make sure. I get up there. We didn't do the line above that. So we didn't do that line either. Can you scroll up a little bit? We didn't do that line. Uh, we had the one, got uh, with the one plus. That was the last line we did. Okay. So what I'm doing here in this guy is I'm plugging in what dy dx is right there. Okay. And what I'm doing here is I'm converting this via that thing we always need to do. Because that's like it's saying, okay, if x equals tangent theta, dx d theta is secant squared. So this is like the secant squared piece in the trig substitution, okay? Okay, so then what I do is I common denominator it here in this line. Am I still here? Are you guys there? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, all right. And then what I did is I just pulled this thing outside of the radical to get it to there. Okay. The next step is I pulled this thing out. Okay. So now what I'm going to do is cancel that thing and arrive at our desired destination. Okay. And so this is the formula 
for the arc length of a curve given by parametrically by x is x of t, y is y. Okay, now, you still need that? Just wait uh, one second. Yeah. I'm almost done copying. Is that the answer, the one they had the square round? Yeah. Perfect. When I still don't totally understand when you decide to stop on a problem. Like they, we, you know, there's nothing solved that I see there, like outside of DTs at the end. DT over. I guess like, so let's say that I was the first person ever in the history of mathematics to do the to 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 consider this. Mm -hmm. Okay. Now, way back up here at the top, I know this formula, this, this length formula right here, okay? okay? And I've got this new idea of using parametric equations because sometimes my curves aren't exactly function satisfying, okay? So the reason I stopped right here is because this contains all of the information that I need. I, I, I know x of t, so I can get dx dt. I know dy dt, so I can get dy dt. And that's the formula. OK. OK. Now, there's a problem with this formula, OK? Note, we have a problem. I did something in this chase to get to this formula that I'm not really allowed to do. Okay. And the step came from right here. I wanted to take the square root of one over dx dt squared. Okay. Now, if I asked you to tell me the square root of negative two squared, what would you give me as the answer? For the those of you that have been with me since pre-calculus. Negative one half over two. No, the square root. I would of say negative two. two squared. Two. Right. What it is, it's the absolute value of negative two, which is two, okay? The reason for this is because this symbol is not an algebraic symbol. This is man-made symbol, okay? And a choice was made by someone a long time ago that, you know, we should probably report the positive square roots. I mean, hell, People really didn't understand the concept of negative numbers until like the 1500s, you know? So the, the concept of negative just, you take for granted a lot, a lot of things, man. If we went back in a time machine to the 1400s and just walked around Paris or, you know, some other town that was kind of important, we'd be thinking, man, you guys are a bunch of idiots, you know? But it's just, the way it went. Okay, so this really needs to be this. And this is going to show up later on in a problem. I'm going to remember those cardioid things. We're going to set up the problem. I'm going to draw the cardioid. And then we're going to go to calculate the length all the way around the cardioid. And the integral is going to work out all nicely and everybody's going to love it. As we're finishing the problem, you're going to start getting a warm, tingly feeling inside. And we're going to get length equals zero. And then I'm going to go, okay. And you're going to go, okay, that's good, Bobby. Let's move on. I'm going to say, no, we can't have the length zero. Look, I drew it. It has a length, okay? That problem comes from doing exactly this and not putting in the absolute values. Okay, now, the formula is still valid. OK. 
okay? And in my book, I'm looking at now edition seven, where it's in section 10 point, um, it's in section uh, 10.2. Some of you might be in a different section. What he does, and he, I, I'm not gonna, I'm not gonna take us all the way through the fix. But, but what he does is he, he looks at the curve, and he takes these points like this, like let's say this is p i minus one, p i, p i plus one, and He's going to approximate just like we did before with all of this stuff. That was interesting. Okay, so um, what ends up happening, if you remember in the formula, we ended up with something like uh, square root. And then I had a, this is from a few days ago, delta x squared plus, then I had this f of x i minus f of x i minus one. And yeah, maybe I shouldn't write it there. I should put it under here. So what I had in the formula was this was xi minus xi minus one squared, and then plus the yi's, which were these guys, like that squared. And then what I did is I put in uh, xi minus xi minus one squared, and then multiplied it by xi minus xi minus one squared. So what this ended up giving us was delta x squared. Then we had this difference quotient in here, which we, by the mean value theorem, we had that. And that was the million dollar step for the problem delta x squared. And then the next thing is I did is I factored the delta x out. Now, the reason I was allowed to do that was because delta x was positive. Okay. Back up here. I mean, just, you know, think of a curve. If I know this is all kind of new to you guys, and it's not, you know, nestled in your brain like it's nestled into my brain. But if, if, if we had a curve that was going like this, okay, at, at this point right here, you're traveling this direction. So your X coordinate is getting smaller. Would you agree with that? Yes. So that would mean that DX DT must be negative, right? That's what, you know, we learned last semester. Okay, so it's entirely possible for this to happen. Okay, so what he does, and I'm not going to go through it. You guys can read it. And the reason I don't go through it is because I can't tell you the complete story. Um, he has this mean value theorem step in two different places. He's looking at this P I minus one to P I distance. And it ends up looking like the following. It's X prime of T I star squared. And then here's where the problem comes in. It's Y prime of a different value. There's no guarantee that the mean value theorem is gonna have the same guy for both of those things. And then all of this is now multiplied by a delta t squared, which we know to be positive. 
Okay, now when I started at Orange Coast College, we had an adjunct named Dave McKay. Have any of you in your travels, maybe Brian, because you were in school a while ago and then came back, or maybe some of you? Dave I only McKay. had to do through uh, algebra two for my first degree. So I don't, I mean, unless he was like basic algebra teacher. Well, yeah, Dave taught a lot of stuff for us. Um, Art Wayman, uh, who was the chair of the math department at Cal State Long Beach, kind of gave him this really long contract, like 20 year contract to teach over there. And so he was just kind of sick of us. And they, they didn't fire him, but they, they didn't schedule him again. He taught a, he taught a large lecture math 30 class in 140 mm -hmm. seats and gave every student an A. Nice. So, yeah. Wow. But anyways, once they gave a talk and about how you get around this. Okay. Mathematically, you can get around this. This, you can't turn this into a, see, obviously the next thing we're going to do is some add them up, you know, and then take a limit. But it's not a Riemann sum because I have two different arbitrary points. Okay. So Dave researched and researched, and I don't know if he came up with it himself or he found it somewhere, but he found a way around it. And he presented it once at a talk, and I couldn't make it to the talk, but I did have all of his stuff. And in one of the office moves, if we move, I moved from Lewis to um in the middle of campus and i had this file cabinet and i didn't never had a key to the cabinet so i never locked it and in the move they locked it and that's where all those papers are and then in the move back the file cabinet never made it back and now i don't know where this file cabinet is but anyways it has a lot of good, good shit in there and one thing that's in there is this talk that dave mckay did to, to patch this up Okay, so let's see this thing working. All right. So for example, let's do the let's do the circle. So I've got x of t is going to be cosine of t. Y of t is going to be the sine of t. Okay. And we're going to let the t run all the way through to get the whole circle. So the length is going to be the integral from zero to two pi of the square root of negative sine t squared plus cosine t squared dt. And we find that, well, this didn't really tell us much, right? Hey, Fabio, you got a quick question. Um, I noticed how you have x of t equals cosine t. When do you uh -huh. use the cosine, when do you use the t in parentheses after the cosine versus just the t directly after with no parentheses? Does that matter at all? I've seen it written both ways, so I just didn't know. I don't know. Sometimes, like, if a new variable is in there, sometimes, like, if it's the cosine of 2x, I definitely want to you know, do something like that. I mean, I've had students in the past, the, the answer, you know, we would do an integral and the answer would be maybe X squared secant squared X minus X tan squared X plus C. I'm not kidding you. This is how this student wrote the answer. The student got it right. X squared times secant of X times secant of X minus X times tangent of X times tangent of X. You see that? Yeah. What a disaster, right? Okay, so that's like the worst I ever saw anybody ever do. 
Okay, now I don't want to get into this one because I know it's going to be a pain in the ass. But let's say I have y equals x squared, zero less than x less than one. Okay, let's parameterize the curve. X equals t, y equals t squared. Okay, now we did this problem. I think we did it last Thursday, maybe. And when we did it directly, if you remember, it opened up a whole can of whoop bass on us. And you end up with weird numbers like the natural log of the square root of five and all that. Okay, now, do you think that problem is going to still exist here? If you had to bet 20 bucks on it? Yeah. Yeah. The reason why is because the length of the curve is the length of the curve. It doesn't change. No matter how we go compute this thing, it's still going to be that jacked up number. Okay, so let's do our length here. I'm not, and I won't finish this because I'll let you guys do it at home. Our t is going to run between zero and one. The only thing that we're hoping for is maybe the integral is a little easier, but it probably won't be. Okay, so we get the integral from zero to one of the square root of one plus two t squared dt. And if you remember, that's kind of what we had last time. Okay, so now you're going to do trig substitution. It's going to lead to the secant cubed integral. So just for practice, you guys, you do it yourself. Okay. It's getting dark. Let me turn my lights on. Ugh. All right, so let's try a couple of these in the exercises. And usually they give you backed up exercises to do because the answers work out nicely. Okay, so let's see where, where is, where are the arc lengths? Okay, so here we go. All right, so x is going to equal e to the t plus e to the negative t. And y is going to equal t times cosine t. And the t is going to run between 0 and 1. OK, good luck eliminating the parameter there, OK? Now, one of the interesting things about this that I like to point out is that we can compute the length of this curve even though we don't know what the hell it looks like. I mean, we would probably have to, you know, put it in a software package, you know, or, you know, maybe painstakingly plot these points. I, I mean, I don't know, but wait, which one am I doing? Oh, not that one. Whoops. Um, this guy. Five minus two T. Okay, this one we might have the next one that's like impossible. We might be able to eliminate T here. We would get X equaling a function of Y. You know, we just solve this for t, plug it in up there. Maybe we could invert it. We recognize that that's two hyperbol that's two times the hyperbolic cosine of t. Okay, well, who cares anyway, right? We just want to integrate. So we're going to go from zero to one. I mean, zero to three. That's the way the problem wants it. I usually pick the bounds so that nice nice canceling happens and stuff. Okay, so take the derivative of that. So that's going to be e to the t 
minus e to the negative t and square that. Take the derivative of this, negative two, and square that dt. And I'm gonna go from zero to three. I think I'm going to finally break down and get a haircut. So we're getting out of hand here. I think it's just so unnecessary to go have someone rub their fingers all over my head. All right, so let's see here. What we're going to end up with is zero to three square root of stupid pencil. One. Okay, here we go. E, e to the 2t minus 2 plus e to the negative 2t plus 4 dt. And this is going to be one of these things that ends up being a perfect square, of course. It's going to be e to the 2t plus two plus e to the negative two t. Okay, and just to answer the question, how do you know to do this step that I'm doing right now? e to the t plus e to the negative t squared. If you're thinking, I never in a million years would have thought of that. Okay, well, me neither, you know, I didn't come out the womb, you know, knowing all this stuff. Obviously, I saw someone do it once, and I remembered it. It's people like Gauss and Euler that come up with original ideas that rock the world. Okay, so anyways, everything's positive, because E to the T stuff is always positive, so you don't have to worry about anything. Sorry for interrupting. Uh, but uh -huh. where, what about, sorry for interrupting, but what about the two? It's so he, he, it's basically a parabola. So he, he just made, he got the square out of it. It's a, it, okay. Uh, it, okay. this, if you square this part out, that's where the two goes. Mm -hmm. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, I know what you're, th this is maybe the not so good of equation because, okay. You might be thinking that I'm trying to say that this, and I will not say equal, square root of e to the 2t plus square root of 2 plus square root of e to the negative t. Can't do that. Mm -hmm. The square root sign is a grouping symbol. Now, in the heat of battle, you know, a lot of people do stuff like that. Okay. Now, a good indication that that you're doing something wrong is if you get a thing like yeah what happened to the two you know or something like or you get a bunch of nonsense for your answer okay so we can finish this off this integral is going to be e to the t minus e to the negative t zero and three so it's e cubed minus e to the negative three minus one minus one. So it's e cubed minus one over e cubed. Okay. Yes. All right, here is an interesting problem. I think the last time I did this one might be more than 10 years ago. Someone asked me to do it in class. Okay, so we have x of t is equal to 3t minus t squared. And y of t is equal to 3t squared. And what the problem says, and this is what makes it so tantalizing, is find the length of 
the okay. Now, what do you think I'm going to write next? Length of the curve? It's not curve. Give me a, any guess. Arc. 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 Okay. Find the length of the. Anything Rabble. else? Rabble. Rabble. Okay. Here's here's what it is. Of the loop. Mm. Be in a, this curve. Oh. Now, looking at the parametric equations. Are you anticipating a loop? Only if you get the y of t, of t equals three to the square. Yeah, but a loop. I mean, that's kind of like circular type things and stuff, okay? All right, now, how are we gonna figure out what the hell this loop's all about? Well, let's see here solution hold on <coughs> oh wait i was going to drink beers tonight during class it's thursday forgot shit it's also boneless thursdays at buffalo wild wings yeah thursdays is get my miller lights on well pretty much every day is get my miller lights on but Thursday, like morning. Okay, so the story about this loop. Beer or just uh, Miller Lite? <laughs> I prefer Miller Lite. <laughs> my, preference, <laughs> my preferences go Miller Lite, then, then Takati Light. Okay. Then Bud Light. These are horrible options, man. <laughs> I don't like that. Thick chocolatey sh IPA shit that tastes like beer mixed with acid. Yeah, there's tons of IPA. Yeah, they taste bad. <laughs> there, there are a lot of options out there, man. There's. I was at, I was at, I was at, so I was at California Adventure. We were all there as family. We got the family passes for you know, and we're over there. And I'm, I got my thermal flask, you know. So I go to the beer stand on California Adventure, and I look at, okay, what beer has the most alcohol in it? And I get as many of those as I can fit into my thermal flask. <laughs> okay so i probably spent like 30 dollars on beer right wow. but put it in the flask and it tasted like someone had started with beer and then took a shit in it <laughs> and and then tried to clean the shit up with acid and it, i don't it uh, i think i even threw the flask away it sort of smelled like it yeah I, I just i don't like it those kinds of beers oh who right. knows maybe i'll maybe i'll change but I recommend the, the, the Mexican, uh, what's it called, collection of beer that they come in the box. It has like Dos Equis, the, both of the Dos Equis, it has Tecate, it has Sol, it has Pacifico, and it has like one other beer that I don't ever recognize. Okay, so then when we get into like the non-light beers, I know not, mm -hmm. not everybody cares about this. Yeah, sorry. Then, then, it. it's, then, it's, then it's Corona. Oh, uh, yeah. A Heineken, but man, you have one Heineken. You smell like you drank a twelve pack. Heineken yeah. sucks. Heineken yeah. really smelling. Okay, so let's let's figure out what's going on with this loop. Okay, so here in a curve, let's say the curve is just racing along here, and it has a loop. So that would mean there would be a spot where it intersects itself, right? Okay, so if, where's this loop gonna come from? Uh, it's on the x-axis. Well, let's see here. Um, let's just start maybe plotting some points and, and see what happens. So zero, zero is a point. When x is equal to one, you know, I'm going to get a, a two and a three. I don't know, this is helping much. Okay. Can we eliminate the parameter? I don't think so because it's a loop. And what I'm seeing, if, if there's a loop in this, I'm not going to be able to solve for y in terms of x, just not. 
okay? I mean, we've seen with the, uh, with the cycloid that sometimes even when it looks like you can, you can. So the, I have to think about this a second. All right. So how do you think we should proceed here? Well, so if we're, what values of T does, so here, here's what, here's what I'm kind of getting at here. Okay, so let's say I just had a regular old parabola, okay? Now, this value that you feed in gives you the same as when you feed in this value, right? So I'm starting to think about stuff like would it would it help at all to set the two things equal to each other? Like what would that tell us? If we were to set x of t equal to y of t. Now we can figure out how that is. 3t squared equals 3t minus t squared. And that would be uh, 4t squared, right? Minus 3t equals zero. And if I factored a t out of that, it would give me 4t minus three equals zero. So that means that T can be zero or T can be three fourths. All right. Okay, now what does this mean? That's where they cross. Let's see. At these two, at these when at these two values of t, the x coordinate equals the y coordinate. That's what that means, right? So when t when when t starts. Okay, hold on. I gotta go stop the flight. Well, maybe, maybe not. Or watch a fight take place better. Yeah. Okay, so the x, let's write the x of t down again. So the x of t is this 3t minus 3t squared. Okay, so now I'm just thinking about what's happening to the x coordinate. I don't know what's happening to the y coordinate, okay? But whatever is happening, the x coordinate starts at t equals zero, which is gonna be zero, right? So it's gonna, it's gonna be right there. Okay. And then what it's going to do, it's going to come and then at some point in time, it's going to turn around and come back and be at that same spot. Okay. Or does it? When does x of t equals zero? You factor the three t out of here and you get one minus t, right? Okay, so I think we're on to something now. T 
equaling zero to t equaling one. Okay. So it goes out and then it comes back. And if you want, we can even find how far out it goes. Okay. What is the what is the max that x of t can be? We were talking about this this morning in my Math 30 class. If you were to grab this on the x t axis, this is an upside down parabola. Its vertex occurs when t is negative b over 2a, which is going to be at 1 half. OK, so at this spot here, t is equal to 1 half. That is the maximum that that x of t is going to get. And then it's going to turn around, and it's going to come back and it's gonna be here at t equals zero and at t equals one, okay? Okay, now let's think about the y thing. The y is the three t squared. Okay. Now that guy is, is not coming back, okay? So when t is equal to zero, it's going to be here. At this t equal a half spot, it's going to be right there. So like the coordinates of the point would be here and here, you know. Okay, at t equal one, however, we've already gone way up to three. Okay, so in order for this thing to loop around, we see that the y is always in, is is always going to be um, increasing. No, that's not true. The y can be decreasing, but okay, so I'm not thinking about it. This is in the x, y grid, okay? The loop would be like this. It's, it starts at this t equals zero. Okay, now the x is gonna come back and maybe do something like that, okay? So it's sort of like you would think about, it, it's hard because it like over here you have a t-axis. Okay, that's mapping onto that, that axis. This is, by the way, kind of the level of difficulty of Math 280. A lot of thinking in that, in that thing. Okay, now notice we haven't done any integrals yet. We're just trying to get our head around what the hell a loop looks like, okay? So I think we figured it out. These are the bounds. Okay, because the x starts and then comes back like this. Okay, and the y is just going to intersect itself. Okay, so where would this maybe be? Can we find this point of intersection? It's going to be kind of difficult to do. Okay. So let's see if we are going to calculate the length. So we think this loop goes from zero to one. Okay. And then it's just what's the x? 3t minus 3t squared. So it's going to be 3 minus 6t squared plus. Okay, now that's going to be 6t squared dt. Okay, so this is like a physics problem. You, you hope you set the integral up correctly. You hope you got your bounds right. 
these are the kinds of things that I would, was telling you about, you know, last semester, even in pre-calc. We had situations where in physics, we had to set up problems to take, take advantage of some symmetries, but it made the angles that we were measuring out of the range of the sine inverse stuff. So we had to manually like move those things because our calculator wouldn't invert them. They, they wouldn't give us the angles. Sine inverse of one is supposed to be pi over, uh, I mean, sine, sine inverse of one half is pi over six, but we needed it to be seven pi over six. And so we you know, had to do that kind of adjusting. Okay, so here's our integral now. And it's gonna be 36 t squared minus 18 doubled 36 t plus 36 t squared dt. And then it's going to be the integral, might as well take the six out of it, zero to one. And now it's going to be the t squared minus t plus t squared. Okay. All right, now what? And we factor out the square again. So then it's just t minus. Oh, we have, t we have t. two. Okay, so one way of looking at this problem is it's going to be six. It's going to be six times the integral from zero to one. One way of looking at it would be two t squared minus t. Mm -hmm. So I'm trying to avoid that. Oh, I see why. So oh. I have an I idea. Think. Yeah. What about like uh, the, at the beginning of the equation? What about it, like canceling the uh, um, the 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 two powers of the uh, no, 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 down, down, down. Sorry, sorry. I'm, I'm. You mean like the older problem? No, no, no. I'm speaking about the L equal uh, the integral uh, the integral from. Yeah, time out, time out. I I fucked up. Mm -hmm. I wrote I. It's because it's so dark. So it's it's the x of t is wrong. Okay, so we have to start this whole discussion again. The x of t. It's my. I need to go up to two. I need to go up to two point oh three t minus t cubed. The y of t is the three t squared. Okay. So if I factor the, if I try to find where the x of t equals zero because t is going to start at zero we're assuming right okay um then i would have t times three minus t squared equals zero so and the promises of the loop of the curve so t is going to equal zero radical three, negative radical three, if we decide to go there, okay. Is there a way to, to maybe think about the parameter up here in these guys? Oh, thank God the trash man's here. They were supposed to be here on, they were supposed to be here on Tuesday. All our cans are full. Wouldn't we just set it to one, one to zero again? For the well, parameter? maybe, maybe if the curve is all of the things that we talked about are still true. If the curve is going to have a loop, 
then x of t is is x of t is gonna run through the same point. So there's like because the x value would be moving sideways and then he'd be coming back and to do the loop. The mm -hmm. y thing would be doing the same thing. It would be coming back and then it would come back. And um, does it have to be at the same time? When does x of t equal y of t? That just tells us when the graph crosses this line y equals x, right? Yes. Okay. So I'm taking my clues from this, that it goes out and it goes back. Okay, so now it's starting to come back. Okay, so I get this guy. Okay, now three minus three T squared squared plus 6t squared. Okay, now this is going to collapse. I can already tell. But there's still the issue of did we set it up correctly? And it's all coming down to the bounds, right? So that's going to be 9t to the fourth minus 18t squared plus nine plus 36 T squared DT. Okay. And I roll zero to radical three. So I'm gonna have nine T to the fourth Plus we're not gonna we're not gonna factor out the three. Eighteen t squared. Well, yeah, we probably will in a minute. Sometimes though, you see it. So this is the square of three t squared plus three squared. Oh. And so oh, that's why I didn't want to do the three, because now it's going to be this three T squared plus three, which is going to be T cubed plus three T evaluated at zero and the square root of three. Okay, so it's kind of coming back to me. I don't know, maybe it wasn't that long ago. But anyways, it, it came down to like, how do you find the loop? And we were able to figure, well, the, the X is going out and then coming back. So there's no calculator next to the specific problem. Okay, there is a calculator next to the one above it. So maybe this was a calculator problem. Maybe with my TI-85 calculator, I can, I don't have it here with me, it's in my office, but I can graph these kinds of things. Okay, but the mechanics of this thing is, is pretty much all the same. Okay, so now again, we can also talk about surface area. Okay. So if you remember, we had two formulas for surface area. We had the area was the integral and what was it? Two pi y ds, right? Integral two pi y ds. And this was going around the x-axis, okay? And we also had that it's two pi x d s. Okay. okay. 
and that's me going around the y axis. Okay, so to thumb back to 8.2, uh, hit those formulas again. Okay, now the ds, we've kind of worked this out. The ds has many forms. The way that it is in arc length, it ends up being this. This is the thing that we've been using all along. Okay. That is the DS piece. And so let's say that we had a curve that was parameterized in such a way that if we revolved it around the x-axis, maybe from here to here, we might get something useful. Okay, now if you look at the squiggly tail up here, um, you know, that's, what 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 happens when you rotate that around? Like, do you get like a like a hole going around? I and mean, I don't know. Okay, so this is much like the area problem where it it only makes sense to do this sometimes. Okay, and so we would have the area in terms of our parametric equations. Now it's going to be some alpha beta deal, right? And then it's going to be 2 pi. And now it's the actual y of t thing, OK? And then it's the square root of dx dt squared, the ds thing, dy dt squared dt. Okay. All right. Now let's try one that I know works and parameterize it and see if we get the same answer. Okay. Well, actually, I can't say for sure that that works. Can I? Hold on. Uh, Nah. Yeah, maybe I should just stick to finding one in the book. Now I'm thinking. Okay, I know this works for volume, but the area, I don't know. Okay, area of the surface. Okay, so now this is interesting. Okay, so in my book, number 62 says, Find the surface generated by revolving the same stupid thing that we've been doing around, around the axis. Okay. So, and then y equals 3t squared. Okay. I think this problem is going to keep me up all night long. And this is not in any section that has a calculator above it or, you know, there's one below it, but there's a line separating those things. Okay, so this is kind of encouraging. Meaning that the curve hasn't looped back on itself yet. Remember that we were, that when we did it, we reckoned, or at least I reckoned, and Nobody objected, so I guess I decided for us that the square root of three would be a good place. Okay, so if you look at what's happening between zero and one, maybe we can reason our way through this. As x, as t goes from, from zero to one, the x starts at zero and it ends at zero, right? I 
think so. Is this the same problem as last time? Or maybe so, the, it's the one that we did way, way at the very top. The Three, one we, we gave up when we, we messed up. Uh, oh, it's the messed up one? Yeah, it's the messed up one. So if you go up a little bit higher, it's that one. Oh, 3T minus 3. Yeah. Oh, what a weird day. I should go buy a scratcher. Some weird stuff happens like that. Okay, well, are you are you guys all convinced that that we can run this through the formula? Yeah. I am. Okay, what I want to do is investigate why we think we can do this at all. Like when t goes from zero to one, our function, as far as we don't know, our function might do something like this. And now we got this bizarre region in here that's rotating around that, I don't know. Okay. So maybe let's investigate X prime. So X dot is going to be three minus six T. Okay. And when T goes from zero to one, the T goes from zero to one. So at all, okay, so what's happening to the X of T? Okay, when does this equal zero? It equals zero when t is equal to a half, right? Okay, so that means that if we graphed x on the t-axis, okay, that means that the x would have some kind of local extremum right there at that point, okay? All right, so the y is going to be, the y prime is 6t, okay? And that's positive for t being positive, negative for t being negative, okay? So as t goes from zero to one, the x goes from zero to zero. Right? Okay, so I don't know what this is going to give us. Okay, I know that there's some kind of a loop in this curve because of when the X, when T goes from zero to one, the X goes from zero to zero. So the X goes out and then comes back, okay? Now, if we just run this through the, the mechanics of the thing, um, our area is gonna be the integral zero to one, two pi times the three T squared times the derivative here. Okay, so that's gonna be three minus six T squared plus 6t squared dt. And now this is going to be, let's put the two pi outside, zero to one. Actually, I'm gonna put six pi outside and then just have the t squared. So this was 30, 6t squared minus 36t plus 9 plus 36t squared. When is that throughout 9? And then, yeah. So, you factor out the nine, 
it's going to be, well, let's not factor out the nine just yet. So zero to one, six pi t squared. Okay, so I have 72 t squared minus 36 t's plus nine. Oh, I see why you did. Okay. Now, if I factor out a nine out of that, it's going to be 54, zero to one, t squared. And I factored a nine out. So that's going to be eight t squared. And then I factored a nine out, right? Mm -hmm. Minus four t plus one. Okay, now that's got to be a perfect square, otherwise it's not doable. So it can't be a perfect square. There's an eight. Okay, what did I do wrong? Seventy-two. Okay, so let's start over. Luke asked, "Why is it nine and not three? Uh, good question. Oh, last time we did three, right? Because I squared it. See how three is being squared? Yeah. Okay, man. Let's see if I let's see if I get the same thing trying it again. You know, you guys can play along at home. I mean, okay. So in this problem, it was find the exact surface area. 3t minus t cubed. And then the other one is y of t equals 3t squared. t goes from 0 to 1. OK, so instead of writing down the square root shit, I'm going to take the derivative of the x, which is 6 minus 3t squared, that, that's that derivative and square it. And then this derivative is 6t squared. And so now that's going to be a 36. No, I like to, I like to put the other guys there. Maybe that's the problem. Okay, so this is going to be 9t to the fourth power minus 18 doubled 36 t squared plus wait no that's the problem that's a three So that must have been what I did. Okay. Little wrong derivative. Okay, so now this is going to be 9t to the fourth power minus 18t squared plus 9 plus 36t squared. And there you have it. So now it's 9t to the fourth plus 18t squared plus 9, which is going to be 3t squared plus 3 squared. OK. So now that's our ds thing. So our length is now going to be the integral from 0 to 1. And then it's 2 pi times the y, which is the 3t squared, times the square root of 3t squared plus 3 squared dt, which is the integral from 0 to 1 of 6 pi t squared times 3t squared plus 3 dt, 
And so that's going to be six pi on the outside, zero to one, three t to the fourth plus three t squared dt. I don't know why I didn't factor the three out. Six pi. Now, I'm going to do it now. Back to the three out now to get 18 integrals, zero to one, of t to the fourth plus t squared dt. And so that's 18 pi times a fifth plus a third, which is which is eight over 15. So it's 18 pi times eight over 15. And what's 18 times eight? 80 plus 64. 80 plus 64 is 144 pi over 15. Is that right, 144? 144 factors, so many different ways. Yeah, 144 okay. Over That's us just doing the, the integral, but this is still kind of bugging me that the x, which is, what was it? 3t minus t cubed. I'm convinced that this thing as well has a loop. Okay, so now I'm just, okay, now I'm, this sucks. I was all fired up to just grade your test. Now I'm gonna be thinking about this all night long. Okay, so I think we see that X equals zero when T is zero and when T is one. I mean, when T, no, it's not zero and T is one. I factor the t out, t, okay, maybe, yeah, now I'm back to my square root of three thing. Okay, so now the t goes to three minus t squared. Okay, zero, t, square root of three. Now, square root of three is about 1.7-ish, right? Okay, so maybe this thing hadn't, hadn't turned around yet. Let's see where it turns around. Okay, where does it have a max or a min? See all this stuff coming back? Maybe this is why I remember all this stuff because I run in dilemmas like this and I'm just, I just can't let it go. And so if I don't remember it, I go dig it up and I do it enough times and I remember it. Okay, so the derivative here is gonna be three minus three T squared, which is equal to three times one plus t, Weird. one minus t. Okay, now all the action is taking place between in these regions, okay? So let's see what's happening here. When we plug in a zero, like the zero right there, that's where we're actually starting. Okay, if we plug in a zero, x dot is positive. Okay, so that means we're increasing. Okay, so we are increasing in this region and then we're actually also gonna be increasing over here. If I plug in a two, like a two, like let's say, okay, then it's gonna be negative. So it's gonna be decreasing. Okay, so I'm satisfied now. The x value goes from zero to one and it doesn't turn around until it comes back. Okay, so the curve might be doing this and then it comes back. Okay, and so it starts to decrease at 
after x equals 1. So that means if you take it all the way up to here, the x is increasing. OK, now this part of the curve isn't there yet. Actually, I'll draw it in red. This part of the curve isn't there yet. When we go from t equals 0 to t equals 1, we're going up here and then stopping. OK, so I guess that's why it's OK to flip it around like that. OK. Some of these exercises are really difficult, okay? And I am not done with this chapter. I still have to do more, but okay? So the next thing that we're gonna talk about, I guess on Monday, is gonna be curvature. Okay, now you guys are in my Math 185 class for many different reasons just like my pre-calculus people are in there for many different reasons. When I'm in pre-calculus, I have only one goal, to get you ready for Math 180. I don't mess around with stuff that I think isn't gonna be relevant, okay? Many of you are stopping after 185 because you know that's your major, you just take one year of calculus. But I'm still going to treat this as if I'm trying to get you ready for Math 280. Okay, and in Math 280, this concept of curvature is kind of important, all right? And that's going to take us a good, probably, hour to talk about that, all right? And in my book, the last exercise – how do you spell exercise? E-X-E-R-C-I-S-E. -E. You've got it. C? Yeah, or yeah. S. Or S. No, not Z, S, but that's fine. Xers number 74. Okay, in my book, it's number 74. Okay, now what it is, is I'm not going to be able to draw this very well. He's got this grain silo, and there's a rope attached to a cow. And, well, maybe the cow's not quite all the way there. The cow is like, oh, fuck. Come on. Okay, so the cow has enough rope to walk around all the way to this point and be snug. Okay, so as he walks out, he's going to be generating some kind of, of region that he can graze, okay? The problem in this one is find this area. Okay, now I have this worked out. I believe it is in my, it's, I think it's in my, my little folder of stuff. It's, it's kind of a challenging problem. You're gonna have to parameterize the bull's walk as he's, you know, kind of going around and stuff. So anyways, let's stop all this stuff. And stop. Okay. All right, guys. So let's see. Let me get in the chat here to answer some stuff. Is Tuesday's test going to be on 8.1 and 8.2? Send this to everyone. Yes. And maybe intervals. There are, there are a few integrals that I want to force feed you to make you do them so many times you commit them to memory. So I might do something like that. But in these two sections, there is a lot that we can talk about. Okay, the surface area and, um, you know, 
different forms of DS and stuff like that. Okay, so it's not really a test; it's more like an assignment, you know. And it's not going to be timed anymore. I'll just give you however long to do it. Okay. Okay. All right. Good man. Thanks. Okay, so you want to uh, get ahead in that section in chapter ten, whatever book you have. It's in. An, he buries curvature in an exercise. Okay, and it's a really important concept when we get into Calc three, because we want to know how bendy a curve is, and this what this is is a watered down version of a result that Gauss was able to arrive at himself. He figured out how to properly define curvature of like a three-dimensional object. And he defined it as, imagine this, this three-dimensional object has a tangent vector pointing out of it at any time, okay? Now, if it's a flat thing, this tangent vector won't really move at all, right? It's gonna still point in the same direction. But if I'm curved, this tangent vector is going to move all over the place. Okay, now that's just in two dimensions. Gauss was talking about going around all dimensions. So he figured out a way to do this. Okay, and so this is kind of a two dimensional version of what he had come up with. All right. So is that a way, is that something like, for example, if you have X and Y and then you gave you, uh, it gave you a depth, like a uh, so that it you can see it moving in the air. Yeah, like so. So here's I I'll, I can tell you this now since you're asking. So if if we were going to design uh, a, a new on ramp to the from the 55 to the 70 uh, to the five freeway, mm -hmm. okay. To use the least amount of material, the on ramp should be connect should be like this. Okay. Okay. Now, what's the problem with that? Uh, the right angle. And it's we're all going really 70 angle. miles an hour, and we're going to yeah. hit this right okay. angle. Okay. So we're going to have to have some kind of curviness to this road. Okay. Now, there are all kinds of Caltrans regulations that you engineering majors will eventually study at some point in time that has to do with how curvy you can make a road. And in particular, as you drive up, you uh, just think about being on the 55 onto the five. I'm sure everyone in this room has done. It, okay. You go up like this and it, and it kind of bends you around and then it kind of smooths you out. One of the one of the uh, that's on file with the state, uh, um, you know, through the you guys will be all practicing engineers at some point, and then there's a board of you guys that busybodies want to get on, and then you guys make policies, and then they become kind of lost. Well, what happens is the curvature after you've meet reached your um, this point where you're it's considered like you're now in the second half of your journey, mm -hmm. okay, after the arc length, and it's an arc length argument too. The curvature has to slowly, has to decrease down to zero, okay? So being able to measure that is important. I mean, if we, even if we designed, you know, the on-ramp to have like this kind of, you know, that's just way too fast, you know? And then they figure there are sometimes there are like, there are just no ways around stuff, you know? And I do know that when you get on the five, on the 55 and you want to get on the five south, they tell you to slow down. It's because they couldn't control the curvature the way they wanted to, okay? All right, well, anyways, try that problem. And if I can find it, I will, um, I'll give it to us all, okay? Okay. All right. So let's end this. I'm gonna start drinking some beers. Have a good weekend, man.
me too. Feel, feel free to email me. Feel, email me with integrals or questions. I'll solve them. You okay. Know, I'm kind of, we're all kind of bored here. All right. Great weekend, everyone. Stay classy, San Diego.